that if you're a teacher, I get it that sometimes accidents happen at work where a child is hurt and you're like, oh crap, how is this going to reflect on me? But when you are talking to the parent of that child, a parent who's on their way to the hospital because their child has an injury that required them to be transported to a hospital and that parent hasn't even had the chance to see her child yet, that might not be the perfect time to imply that that kid is a moron and can't be alive. Ooh. It doesn't really matter because I feel so free now. Good morning. Happy Monday. Can I just start this video off by saying I am tired? I'm like Thursday tired and it is 5.43 Monday morning. That's not usually a good sign, but the weekend, I didn't really have much of a weekend for myself. Um, I had paper grading to do, some lesson plans to finish up, and then I had to do report cards. We changed our report cards um, this year, actually, but the problem is the permanent format is not done. So my district created a Google document template to use. And I was trying to get it all in there, but there was this massive learning curve, not to mention the grades are now entered differently. So we are no longer doing A, B, C, D, E, which a lot of teachers are very, very happy for. We moved to a standards-based report card instead. Um, which actually, as much as I'm happy to have a standard space report card, I found it a little challenging because I know a lot of our parents aren't going to understand the new report card. We're gonna to have to like explain it to them at every parent conference. And for first grade, you know, there are four choices are um, exceeding the standard, meeting the standard, approaching the standard, or area of concern. So the grades are literally E, S, M, S, A, S, or C, A. And as I was doing all of my report cards, I found that honestly, about 90% of my report cards, my students were scoring approaching standard for almost every category except for in the personal behavior areas. Some of my students are well behaved and are meeting the standard. I didn't have a single student exceeding the standard. And when you think about that, it makes sense. We've only been in school for 10 weeks. This is first grade. Most of my students don't have a full mastery of the language. So at the end of the day, it makes complete sense that the bulk of my classroom is at the approaching the standard category. And then as the year goes by, they will then slowly but surely begin to move up in the category rankings to hopefully meeting the standard. Um, but yeah, so I mean, at first I'm like, I was doing these report cards and you know I would have students who were reading at like a DRA 2 versus a student who's reading at a DRA 6 and technically both of those students were approaching the standard um, because you know at this time of a year realistically they should be at like a DRA you know 8 or 10 um, but no one in my room is at that DRA point yet. So it did make sense that all of my students are at the approaching standard mark. But it was still a very confusing report card session for me to do for the very first time. And so I can see where there's gonna be a lot of parents who are going to look at that ES, MS, AS, CA and see their child you know, near the bottom and wonder, why did my child get a bad grade? It's, like, it's not a bad grade. Your child is getting nearer and nearer to meeting the standards. It's not 
grades anymore, but that's going to take a lot of explaining to our parents, especially considering a language barrier. So wish me luck on that because we do have parent conferences Thursday. So also there was a huge mistake in the template. Um, the person who made the first grade, the, the report cards have changed for K1 and 2. And the K report card and the 2 report card template were fine. On the first grade report card template, social studies is listed twice and math isn't on it. So I'm hoping today, Monday at work, they get that fixed. But now tonight, <coughs> I have to find a way to get back into the document and now edit 30 report cards because 30 report cards do not have math grades. So although I got the big, big, big part of the report card done and that is the comment section because writing all those comments does take forever. Um, so yeah, but oh my gosh, I granted I had to stop at one point to cook dinner and I stopped at another point to cook lunch, but I was working on my report cards yesterday for about five and a half hours. <laughs> I really was. And I still have five more to do, but I'm really hoping that I can knock those five out today at work because now that the learning curve is over, they're, they're going much faster. But um, yeah, it was definitely a challenge to do those report cards, especially with a template that wasn't completely accurate. So right now I am packing lunches and I'm getting ready for the day. I am moving a little slow. Um, I slept well. I'm just, I'm tired. It was a really, it was a, it was a work heavy weekend. I am in my classroom and a teacher just brought me my attendance to help me doing my report cards. Boy, I really could have used this over the weekend. Um, I kind of sort of don't need this anymore. So I will hold on to it though, <coughs> just in case. But yeah, I just walked in. It's 10 after 7. I was talking for a little bit. I have all of my PRC work arrived. These are like the copies for like the next couple of units for things we are doing in here. And you will notice the room is very different. I did vlog the room last week, but I only vlogged one day last week just because it's just really busy. It's, I don't know, and maybe it's because it's first grade instead of fourth grade and they're so much more needy. I mean, first graders are, at least my first graders, are not independent at all. So when I taught fourth grade, my fourth graders could get busy on something and I could duck at my desk real quick and have four or five minutes to get something done that needs to be taken care of. Well, with first grade, this desk is like for decorative purposes only. Um, I'm constantly on the move, constantly with them. So when my preps come or my, my time comes, oh my Lord, I'm just like bombarded with things I have to do. So, and then I forget to pick up the camera because I'm so focused on getting the work done. I just, I forget to pick up the camera. But last week I did do a lot of changes in the room, which I know you guys are like, Tina, you changed again. Yes, I did. I changed again. Um, in May and June, I decided to go with like a huga and pink. I wanted a very simple, very neutral color. And when I did the pink in June, I loved it. By mid-October of this year, I absolutely hated it. I had several problems. First of all, the pink alphabet, well, it was white letters on like a pale gray with pink outline. It was beautiful, but my first graders couldn't see the letters. The white with the gray, the, the contrast was too subtle. Um, so between the glow of the lamination and the lights and then the pale letters, my first graders just were like, Miss Biller, Miss Spitler, what does that look like? What is that letter? So I changed my alphabet and this one is working much better. It's been up now for a couple of days. The kids love it. Very useful. Um, and then, I don't know. I just, I ended up not liking the pink. As the weather outside got colder and colder, I found the pink to be very cold feeling as well. It, it, the room wasn't that warm and cozy that was the initial plan. So I made, not this weekend, but last weekend I went to the dollar store 
and I bought all new containers for my room because a lot of the containers I had were just really gross and beat up and ugly and I couldn't clean them anymore. Even Mr. Clean Magic Erasers wasn't cleaning them anymore. So I went and bought new ones. These are the new math buckets that we are using. And then here is our new table buckets. Um, I did throw a shot of this up on Instagram. We have a little galvanized bucket here for the pencils, the crayons, and everything else is in there. And I do love the color of the new um, Tupperwares. And then I bought more over here to serve as our science buckets. And I love how these look like, you know, literally it's going to come right off the farm. So I like that. And then coming around the room, you will see that the pink banners, the little pennants, they're all gone. I actually dug out my old Apple curtains I have not used in a couple of years. But so I brought these back out. And then coming around here, I removed the pink off the trim and replaced it with Susan Wingett. And again, this is border trim I've had for years. I love Susan Wingett. Um, she just does that real vintage teacher theme and this is like an ABC trim. And the color of the border just happened to match the color of the buckets perfectly. It wasn't planned, that was a happy accident. But then of course it also matches like with the apples on the curtains coming around. This now makes more sense because it's more rustic looking. I still have my shower curtain here. I do need to swap out the pink on this one. Here is my new alphabet. This is from Erica Borer, um, from Erica's Adventures. She is a first grade blogger and she does make printables and they are just gorgeous. The children, the black on white is just so much better. And I like the trim. The trim is like um, burlap. It's kind of hard to see. It's not coming through on the camera. In real life though, you can see it's burlap. I did keep the clapboard um, paper up because that is rustic. It does go with the theme <clears throat> that I like. And then again, I took off the pink for, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. These boards, but I have since purchased, where's my bag? I have purchased brown. And so not today, because today I've got report cards and bigger fish to fry. But hopefully before Thursday conferences, I will put up brown trim around these to tie the theme in a little bit more. And then of course the curtains. I still have my fireplace. And the fireplace with the stone, oh, it just fits in so much better. And then the last curtain over here, I still have this up for the moment. And then with my word wall words, again, I took down the pink and put up the Susan Wingette border trim. And I just, I feel like the room is a lot more unified looking. And I know it's a little messy with the boxes on the tables, but I love the new theme. I love the rustic farmhouse, vintage school feeling. I like the deeper colors. I like the apples. It's much more me, um, whereas I think the pink was just a little too modern and maybe I'm just not that modern of a person. So I'm definitely loving the new decor. Um, I'm not going to repaint my little boxes over here, my teacher toolkit. That's just gonna go ahead and stay pink. Um, because a little bit of pink in the room is not a problem. This is still very much my corner. I did make one mistake though, and that mistake is over here with these trays. And I learned a valuable lesson with these trays. I spent about $100 replacing my busted up trays that I had, and I bought these in pink. And they're beautiful and I love them and I'm not going to get rid of them. However, it would have been better if I had purchased them in black or gray or just some kind of a neutral color. I learned a valuable lesson. When you're doing a theme, that theme should be in paper products. You know, trims, posters, decor, things like that. But when you're doing a theme, something that you're going to buy that you're planning to use for the next five to ten years in a classroom never buy that in your theme colors always buy that 
in a neutral or black because as long as you have black you can use any other color in the world you want to use but because I bought that in pink it's now stuck pink no matter what theme I choose to do in the future so valuable learning lesson right there my munchkins are at special lunch has already come and gone and I ate lunch with my colleagues today which is always nice. Sometimes I eat with them because I enjoy their company. Other times, I'll be honest, I just sit in my room and get work done. But today, it was like, you know what, I'm gonna go see the girls. So that's what we did. Um, I do wanna show you some things that I've done in here for math. Um, even though the bulk of this weekend was spent doing report cards, which, by the way, I'm kinda starting to freak out about those because once you submit them, it appears that you can't get back in them and my report cards right now don't have math on the report card. So they're like working to fix it. Well, I hope you fix it soon, I really do. Plus, I just got the gym and art grades just now. Um, but I, I couldn't wait for all of this to be done. I had to get it done tomorrow, yesterday rather. Because honestly, I spent six hours doing all of that. There was no way I wanted to try to get that done on like a Monday night and Tuesday night. I mean, honestly, I spent the whole day yesterday just working on it, collecting all my information, doing the comments, getting it all done. And yeah, I just, I was not waiting to the last minute and then pull an all nighter because I had to get report cards done or something. So one thing I did do over the weekend though was I made these. I'm sure you've probably seen this part, part total diagrams. And there is one in the math series that you can Xerox, but I kind of made this one on cardstock because it's a little bit more dur durable. And then I used it for today's lesson. Um, in the math manual, they really just want like the teacher to have one of these. I like it though to be able to have every kid with one. And I've made paper ones in the past and ran them off for the kids, but you know, it only lasts a day. And then I find like three days later, I kind of need this diagram again. So I ran them on cardstock. I didn't have time to laminate them. Plus I don't have enough lamination sheets at home. I've really burned through all of my lamination sheets. But so I like with these that you can literally have the kids make the parts on their paper and then slide it up so that they can actually see putting the parts together and finding out the total. Now, if you're just doing part plus part equals total, it's no big deal. But where my kids really struggle is, let's say you have three plus a number equals seven. My kids are really struggling with that. So with this one, at least, okay, you can say, all right, you have the total. The total is seven. What is the part you know? Three. Okay, well, put three in one side. All right, I go, well, what's left? Four, well, that four is your missing part. So it's just a visual rep representation of a concept that we want them to eventually get in their head. So this was how I started my lesson today before I switched over to dominoes and then we continue doing part, part, total with dominoes and then we finished up the math lesson today with a game of domino topics. So lots of fun stuff and, and hands-on and I really, infer, that's one of my complaints with everyday math. I don't think everyday math actually has enough hands-on experiences. I said this as a fourth grade teacher and I'm kind of repeating it as a first grade teacher. In first grade, month one, month two, it's very hands-on. Lots of games, lots of materials, lots of manipulatives. But then once you get to unit three, you kind of hit paper and pencil really, really heavy. I'm of the firm belief that, you know, okay, sure, you spent the first two units doing hands-on, but you're going to be hands-on all year long. You really are. So even if there's a lesson that doesn't call for materials, I'm going to find a way to pull materials into that lesson anyway just to get that hands-on because a lot of my children are still really working on developing that number sense and so things like this is just it makes it more concrete and a little easier to comprehend and then another thing I did this weekend I made number lines these are really small 
and I made a whole class set. And again, I need to get these laminated. Um, I think after we finish using these, that's when I'll send to our school PRC and have them get laminated there. I bought these ones at the teacher store. So they all had these really big number lines, which I liked at the beginning of the year because you could actually put a counter on it and then have your counter make your bunny hops and move up and down or back on the number line. But now that we are getting into the paper and pencil work, those are just too big to have six of those at one table. So now just a smaller version where they can take their finger and move back and forth into the number line is all I really need. And these, this was just a printable off the, um, the, the math series itself. I just, again, I ran it on cardstock. I ran it on color because color is always more fun than just black and white. And yeah, that's what I did for math today. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to stop right now because I'm going to try and log into my report cards and hopefully get in there and hopefully some things are done, things are changed. Also, real quick, um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, the last video I put up was the, the my diet journey. And um, again, I just want to say thanks to everyone. I got a lot of support from that video. And I never know the reaction I'm going to get on these videos. You know, sometimes you put up a video and you can think everyone's going to like it and they don't. Sometimes you can put up a video and you're like, I don't know if they're going to like this one or not. And then everybody is very supportive of it. So thank you guys. I appreciate your support. I really do. Thank you for the compliments. Um, it was really nice to hear from you guys. I do feel better and it's nice to have my clothes fitting instead of being all pulled this way and that way. And so, but yes making progress. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Right now I am just trying to get some things ready for parent conferences. They're not today. Conferences and report cards are Thursday. And it's funny because our old report card that we had <coughs> for like the last 10 years, possibly even longer, was literally just an A, B, C, D, E in all subjects, even for like K through 12, with very little ways of personalizing it or adding additional comments. So I actually went online and purchased um, Michelle's conference forms. I started filling them all out and I was like, okay, I love these forms. This will make my parent conferences so much more useful. Well, then my district went and changed the report cards. And now the report cards are so detailed, like extremely detailed, that it made all the conference forms that I printed and began filling out really redundant because I will have a copy of the report card with me for conferences and I'll just go over the report card and all the information, all the comments, all behavior tracking, it's already on the report card. So I went and did all that work for nothing <laughs> um, because then I just had to go back and redo it anyway. So right now though I am stuffing my folders while I'm sitting here because I'm getting in their um, their a word their sight word assessments in here, their latest math test is going in here um, and a few other things. So that's all the things I'm working on right now. I'm just trying to get my folders packed. And for my folders for conferences, they're just basic, very simple folders like these. In past years, I've had like really big, fancy student portfolios with multiple pockets and the kids decorated the covers. And honestly, a lot of that is just kind of excessive and not really necessary. So this is much easier to just have a few folder or have a single folder and also, the problem with student-led portfolio conferences, which was a big deal in my district for years, it was all about student-led portfolios. Well, the students initially had charge over what went in that portfolio and what didn't go in that portfolio. So what would happen with those is that you would have this portfolio full of their very, 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 very best work that they had accumulated over the two months. Everything that was missing 
was like grades C or worse. And so suddenly you would have a parent come for a conference and you would be explaining to the parent why the child is struggling, uh, steps that need to be take, taken to avoid retention. And then the kid would show the parent this portfolio of mostly B work. And the parent would look at you like, wait, you're talking about my child possibly being retained? Why? Look at all this good work. And then you'd have to explain to the parent, yeah, well, what's missing is, you know, all the E's. So I was not a fan of student-led portfolio conferences. And literally after that very first year, I began taking control over what went in and out of that student portfolio. Which, and again, if the teacher is taking control of the portfolio, then it really isn't a student-led portfolio anymore. So, yeah, I just really, I ditched the whole student-led portfolio. Now I have a folder of student samples, good and bad, and, you know, especially though for those students where you're making a case about, you know, well, maybe this child needs to be referred to RTI process, this child needs to be referred to special ed, this child may need to repeat the grade level, you need to have work samples backing up all those claims um, because yeah, you can't tell parents that their child is not progressing in class and not have the proof to back that up. So yeah, so right now I'm taking out the conference forms. I already have work samples in these folders and I'm putting in a bunch of new ones. Um, I got in really early this morning. It was awesome. I mean, I got in super early. And my husband though today, kind of sad, he's going up north. And yes, I know I've mentioned up north in previous videos and I know there was a big joke with one video. I think I said the words up north like 100 times in that video. I don't know, something will happen to me sometimes when I'm vlogging and I'll get a word or a phrase like stuck in my head and then I'll repeat it again and again and again in a video and I'm not even consciously aware of the fact that I've said this word or phrase a dozen times until after I go into the editing process and usually when I realize oh my god I've said this so many times I'll actually like put a little scrolling bar and go yeah 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 I know I said this word a bunch of times sorry I don't know why that happens it just does but so he is going up and he's going to be gone for the rest of the week, um, possibly not home until Sunday. And yeah, and before you say, ooh, your husband's a hunter. Yes, my husband's a hunter. He always has been. Um, but we, he does not shoot for trophies. He only, sh he, he puts food in the freezer. Hello, my kids are at special. And I'm about to hang some numbers on the wall. I'm putting these up because I'm realizing a lot of my children are still writing their numbers backward. So just like I needed a better alphabet, I have numbers all over the room. There's a calendar there, a hundreds chart there, but at the end of the day, I need something really big, really bold that they will see. So I'm thinking I'm gonna hang these up over here. And I should do it now. I really should do it now. Um, don't want to do it now, but I'm going to. Let me dig out my tape. I am frustrated with the report cards. The new report cards are amazing. But the IT guy who was supposed to do the new report cards, he literally like put in his resignation and quit just before he was supposed to do them because he went to a better job offer, which is fine. But then basically what happened was the report cards weren't done on time. So they created like a Google document for us to fill out and put all the information in. Well, that's what I did literally, I, I've already said it, I spent six hours Sunday doing report cards. And it was a real pain in the butt because I had some grades in the online grade book. But then I had some grades that were just like in my handwritten grade books. I stopped putting them in there when I realized the configuration was changing. Then I had some papers graded that weren't even in that. So I literally just had them scattered on the table. I had attendances and home addresses and things like that handwritten on another piece of paper because I didn't. Ha I needed all that material brought out too. 
and we had to type in everything, like addresses, first names, last names, student numbers, all that stuff. Even down to like the school address and who's the principal. So you had to go in and do all that. But as I said, they made a mistake on the first grade report card. They put social studies twice and no math standards. Well, now they've gone and fixed it. But I can't go back to my original 30 report cards and just do a few tweaks there. Now it looks like to fix my original 30 report cards, I gotta start all over. The report cards are due by midnight tonight. I'm not even home tonight. You know, Casey has karate after school today, so I have to take him to that. And then by the time I get home from karate, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like 6.30 by the time we get home from that. I go to bed at like 9.30, 10 o'clock. I really do. I do not have six hours to start from scratch and redo these report cards. So I have hit the proverbial block in the road. So what I'm thinking is to mark the gym grades and the art grades, easy peasy. I can literally just take a pen and check mark what theirs was. I'm thinking I'm just going to have to go in and handwrite on the report cards their math standards because, oh, I'm just, I'm not doing them all over. I mean, maybe I can find a way to get them to print me one correct report card and then I can Xerox 30 times the math portion and staple it to the other report card and just tell the parents, hey, sorry, this is, this is the first time we're doing this one. This one's a little messed up, but it'll be perfectly right by the second report card. So, but yeah, I am, I am not doing those bad boys all over again. There is just no way. So it is a bummer. It is a bummer because I don't like to give parents things that are less than perfect. I really don't, but I just, I don't even know what else to do. I really don't know what else to do because I don't have six hours to do those things all over from scratch. School is over. The little munchkins have gone home. This afternoon got a little crazy. Um, I think some of the hands-on activities was a little overstimulating for my firsties. So they enjoyed it. They really did. They liked the globes. They loved the maps. Um, and then we explained why globes are more accurate than a map. How it's like if you peel a globe like a banana you get all these open spaces at the tops and bottoms that messes up the poles. So we talked about that. And then for science, I had clothespins and seeds along with, excuse me as I'm climbing up and down stage chairs, along with toothpicks and like macaroni noodles. And we were talking about why birds have different kinds of beaks and how the long slender beaks are perfect for getting the nectar inside tight spaces of flowers, but then the clothespins represented the chisel beaks, which are good for pinching, which is perfect for picking up bugs or seeds and things like that. So not only did we like look at pictures on Google images of the different kinds of birds and their different kinds of beaks, we also watched like it was literally like a minute and 22 seconds long, a video on Discovery Education that talked about the birds' beaks, and then they played with the toothpicks and the clothespins before we recorded notes in our science book, and. When you have a science notebook with first graders, you have to remember that a lot, at least with a lot of my children, they cannot read the words. So here, we literally drew pictures of the beaks, and I always make sure to put photos or little little illustrations. And the kids also drew the illustrations so that this way they would know this is fish, bugs, seeds, nectar comes from flowers. And then we also recorded our feathers, that this one is a flight feather, this is a down feather, 
and then we drew a blanket because the down feathers help to keep the animal, the birds warm. So lots of picture clues in a science notebook or any kind of a notebook that you're keeping with like K12. So yes, you're going to put the words and the definitions, but you're definitely going to add drawings and illustrations so this way they remember what those words actually say. I'm going to wrap up today's video. I will see you guys tomorrow, but right now with Bill gone up north, I need to get home to my boys and make sure that they are well taken care of tonight. So I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I don't know what to say. Um, I just got in my room. I've been here for a while, but I was actually inside the main building and I was catching up with a couple of teachers. I was catching up with Susie because she's actually been gone for several days. She took her daughter, Kat, to the Culinary Institute in New York. It was amazing. Kat got in on her very first try and so everyone's like really proud of her and excited for her. Um, we have a Susie. Susie's is like, you know, it's a it's a bittersweet happiness. She's very proud of her daughter, but at the same time, she's like, my baby, my firstborn is gone to New York. So yeah. But um, so that's what I was doing. I was talking to some friends and colleagues inside the building. Oops, I just almost dropped the camera. So right now I need to tidy up. I need to put away these giant sacks of papers that arrived yesterday. This morning, actually today in general, is going to be a pretty routine, ordinary day. Although I will say first thing this morning, we have behavior assembly meetings. So we will get that done. Well, the meetings are supposed to be about 20 minutes. Although I'll be honest, they create these like little 20 minute windows for these behavior assemblies. And they were never done in 20 minutes. They usually take more like 30 possibly even 35. So then what happens is all the other meetings get backed up and they're like waiting forever and ever. So I'm really glad that my class is first this morning. <laughs> this way I know it's going to start right on time and everything will be good. And holy smokes, my desk is a mess. I kind of just ran out of here yesterday. One thing I do want to show you real quick. <laughs> I just totally dropped the camera and yeah, that was definitely a vlogger fail. But there is one thing I do want to show you guys real quick. I don't know if I've shared this with you guys yet. My new Kiki K. Um, you guys know I had the A5 in pink from Kiki and I have no regrets switching from a Kiki we're switching from Erin Condren to Kiki K. But the Kiki was definitely bigger than the Erin Condren. So I recently acquired this little beauty. This is the sweet pattern from Kiki K in the medium size. And oh my God, it is so adorable. I absolutely love it. And then it comes with stickers and I have my calendars going and my like pages inside. I just hand drew on a few note pages the month of November because with the new Kiki, it started with December. They give you the month of December in here. They always do that when they send you your inserts. It'll start with December 1st. So this way you get the whole last month of 2017 before jumping into 2018. And then because I don't want it to be uber thick, I only have in here the inserts up to July. So half the year is in my bedside table put away waiting to be used. So this way it like decreases the thickness of the calendar inside leaving more room for meeting notes, to-dos, planning, personal. I have some other things going on in here. I always keep a little gratitude journal with me everywhere I go. And each cover though, like this one says, give generously. The planning one says, embrace the imperfections. I love that quote because, oh yeah, I need to embrace imperfection. Think happy, be happy. Start each day with a grateful heart. And then the last one, live simply. And then you have the cute little notebook here with the kid, the kitten and the pug on every page. And then I even bought, because I like things to match, I dropped 
it's $3 and bought the adorable cat ink pen that matched the print but so shocking just how much smaller this one is I mean when you put them side by side the difference in size doesn't seem that extreme but then once you tuck these into your tuck this into your purse and then you do still get your pocket over here little pockets on here it comes with a little to-do paper the difference in size once I put that in my purse is enormous um, basically I have just gotten really tired of carrying enormous handbags or shoulder bags and so I was like okay what in my purse is taking up all this room well my old camera was twice the size as my new vlogging camera so that cut out like 50% of the stuff going in there my new planner is like 50% of the size of my old planner and yet oddly enough I still have more than enough room to write everything in there that I need to write. I have room in there for YouTube, room for teaching, room for personal. It all still fits because honestly, a lot of the space in the A5 didn't get used. It was wasted space. And I was lugging all of that around for all that wasted space. This is perfection. It really is. Um, and then I've also even edited out a few other things from my purse. So right now I'm still carrying the same coach bag that I was carrying, that I've been carrying for like a year, but it's so much lighter. I mean, wow, is it lighter and I love it. I'm absolutely loving it. But I've been meaning to share that with you guys for a while and I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. So now you see my new planner. So it is lunchtime and my children are gone to eat. I'm gonna grab my food right now. We were having a really good morning. Um, we did our little behavior assembly, that went fine. And then we came back, we did Reader's Workshop this morning. My kids, I am so proud of the progress they are making in their reading. They are coming so far, so fast. I'm just, I'm really, really proud of the growth I'm seeing in them. And that is one of the rewards of first grade. In first grade, September and October, I'm not gonna lie, they are rough. <laughs> when you teach the first grade and kindergarten, September and October, it doesn't feel like two months, it feels like four. And you leave work, and you leave work exhausted like dead on your feet you want to go home curl up on your sofa and cry yourself to sleep exhausted but once you get over that hump <laughs> I swear there is a silver lining it usually happens by like the fourth week of October if not then definitely by the first week of November the room just settles down the routine is on you're in the groove and it's all good from there. And so, yes, we have finally made it over the beginning of the year hump. So my kids, they know the routine now, they know what to expect. I love it, they love it. There's comfort in a predictable routine. So yes, so much smoother going on in the room. And so we were having a great day and again, with the first grade, what makes up for those two rough months at the beginning of the year really is the joy you get when you see, oh my God, they're reading. You know, This child who two months ago knew the word I and a uh, suddenly has 50 sight words under their belt and they are now using their picture clues to guess the words they don't know and they're even tracking with their fingers and they're using initial sounds to self-correct. Oh my God, that is such a wonderful feeling. That is why teachers do this job. That right there is exactly why we do this job. We don't do it for the pay. At least I'm not doing it for the pay because I don't make that much. We don't do it for the pat on the back because let's be honest, teachers, nobody talks to us unless something goes wrong. You don't get pats on the back for all the good things you do. There's nobody saying, oh my God, you did an amazing lesson today. Kudos to you. Uh-uh, but you let 
you know, one kid have a moment of anger and suddenly you've got, you know, three irate parents and a principal knocking at your door and what's going on here? So yes, but you do it because you get joy when you see their growth. So Reader's Workshop was great today. And then for math, we are working on our doubles facts and we were turning picture cards into math problems. And then honestly, I've learned, I've been doing this for a long time. The best way to learn your doubles facts, to memorize them, the best way to learn your times tables is to literally, you have the whole class reciting them. You just, you, teacher says it, kids say it. Teacher says it, kids say it. Teacher says it, kids say it. Teacher and kids say it at the same time, again and again and again and again. And then you stop and you say it and they say the answer. And it takes several days to memorize them, but I swear, good old, there are some things in education that exploratory activities cannot take the place of good old fashioned skill and drill. So that's what we we're doing for our doubles facts today. And then we played a game. It was a race game where the children had to roll to be the first one to get to the top. So they had a die and every time they rolled the die, they had to double the number and say the fact. Today, I had them shade it in. We're going to play this game, though, again, I think on Friday. And I think Friday, instead of having them shade in the blocks to be the first one to get to the top, I'm actually going to have them write the doubles fact, rewrite 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 4, and still play the race game that way. But this way, instead of just rolling the dice and saying it, they're rolling it, saying it, and writing it. Because that you that's you want to get as many senses going at the same time as possible. So that's what I'll do when we play that game again on Friday. Unfortunately, we had a meltdown in the room. I have a student who struggles with a, it's kind of hard to explain. It's a very sensitive child. And unfortunately, he struggles with games. And I like games. The kids learn a lot with games. And so a lot of the time, I won't even make him play the game. Maybe I will make him be the person who's like ref refereeing the game. That will work for him sometimes. But I, I gave him the, you, know, you wanna play? Yes, I wanna play. Okay. So then he and his partner took turns rolling the dice. And unfortunately, he didn't win. You know, the partner won. And it's not even a game of skill. It's a game of chance. You know, you either get lucky and you roll the same doubles fact again and again and again and win, or you don't. And so he lost and he had a meltdown, a full-blown meltdown. And right now my kiddos are at lunch and I'm worried. I'm really, in fact, I might even go and check on him just to make sure that the meltdown isn't continuing on because sometimes when he has a meltdown it can affect other children he sometimes doesn't keep his hands to himself so i'm going to eat my food real quick i'm going to go check on him to make sure that he is okay and i will maybe talk to you guys later good morning happy thursday today is our report card and conferences day and I like these days because I actually get a ton of work done. Um, we have a half a day with students, so the children will be here until uh, 11.20. And then from 11.20 to 12.30 is the teacher's lunch hour. And it's always nice to have an hour for lunch because teachers, our lunches are very short and usually we're trying to accomplish 10 things during that lunchtime as well as eat our food. Um, so yes, having an hour lunch today will be amazing. Although I am not planning on leaving the building for lunch today. I actually brought a lunch from home. Um, yes, it's a lean cuisine. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to stay here. This way I can eat my lunch real quick and then have the rest of that time to work in my classroom, get things prepared for conferences, get things organized and tidy up a little bit before the parents start coming. And then our conferences, we have conferences from 12.30 to 3 p.m. And then from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. is the teacher's dinner hour, which I'll be honest, a lot of the times I'm not even hungry yet because the lunch, it's too early. <laughs> Most people don't eat dinner at 3 p.m. But so my, I, don't, I teach pretty close to my father 
So a lot of the times during the dinner hour, I'll just go over to my dad's house for a little while and hang out for a little bit. And then there is somebody outside honking their horn and the neighbors have to be furious. But so <coughs> I'll go see my dad during the dinner hour and check in with him for a little bit and then come back to my room and continue getting things done. Right now, this morning, what I really want to do, my furniture's all out of the place. I want to get up the brown border trim on those bulletin boards that I took the pink off of. Parents are coming today. I want to have make sure that all the, the room looks really nice and all those little details are taken care of. So I just finished trimming those two bulletin boards and oh my god, I love it. Who knew brown could look so good? <laughs> So, because at first, I'll be honest, I was like, I didn't know what color to pick because I really didn't want red. I didn't want yellow or anything. Just, I, I really wanted to stick with a rustic theme. And at the end of the day, the only color that made sense to me was brown. But even as I was buying it, I was thinking to myself, you're buying brown? Brown? I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It fits the theme perfectly. It definitely makes the bulletin boards pop and it's awesome. So this day is not going as planned. I am currently sitting in the hospital with AJ. Um, I am not at my parent-teacher conferences. I was at school when I got a phone call from his school that AJ had had a chemical burn on his hands. Um, he's in the OSTC like trade school program and he loves these in automotives, but they were doing something with paint stripper and so apparently he had the chemicals somehow got in his gloves and he didn't know it and then he had like a reaction once he got back to the high school and so yeah I basically the minute my students were dismissed I left the building drove like a bat out of you know what to get here um, luckily my mother-in-law was able to come with him to the hospital so he didn't have to like ride an ambulance by himself um, but so, yeah, this was not the way this day was supposed to go. Strange term events. Um, so he's feeling okay, but they're running tests on him right now um, because for some reason he doesn't have sensation in his hands. And so I probably will not be going back to work today because I think once we are dismissed, I think they want him to go home and rest up. So, yeah, and I don't know. Talk to you guys later. Good morning, happy Friday. Um, sorry I didn't get back and vlog yesterday, but I'll be honest, by the time I got home from the hospital, my stress level was through the roof. Yesterday was probably <laughs> one of the most stressful days I've ever had as a mom, as a teacher, and it was one of those perfect storm of events where home and family and the job just crashed and everything was like a flaming hot mess. Um, AJ's okay. He's sleeping at the moment. He is going to go to school today and that's the most important thing. He is okay. He basically got chemicals on his hand and didn't realize they were there until like an hour later when he started getting um, the sensation that his hand was on fire. And so, but he was treated and that's going to be okay. But there was a lot of causes yesterday that led to yesterday being a perfect storm of worst case scenarios. And can I just say that if you're a teacher, I get it that sometimes accidents happen at work where his child is hurt and you're like, oh crap, how is this going to reflect on me? But when you are talking to the parent of that child, a parent who's on their way to the hospital because their child has an injury that required them to be transported to a hospital and that parent hasn't even had the chance to see her child yet, that might not be the perfect time to imply that that kid is a moron and can't be alive. Oh, 
I get that the teacher was protecting his job. I get that. But in that conversation with that teacher, I was literally seeing red. I was so angry. And I literally said, you know, I need to hang up with you because I'm sitting in the parking lot talking with you and I have yet to see my son who's in the hospital. I got to go. And they're like, oh, yes, yes, of course. Go see your kid. But, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> All right. I love AJ. I love him with all my heart, but he does have a touch of hypochondria. And you have to understand that in the last five years, I have rushed to the emergency room 20 times because of AJ. I just have. There's always something wrong, something's, something's causing him pain, He's this is going on, he's vomiting. We've, I kid you not, there's been at least 20 runs to the ER. So, Yesterday, it's like 10.50. It's only a half a day of school. I only have the children until 11.20 because of parent conferences. So I get 10.50, I get a phone call from AJ's high school that, you know, he's suffering from a chemical burn and they're calling an ambulance to take him to the hospital. And my immediate reaction was, whoa, 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 <laughs> okay, because I know my son. I love him dearly, but I know my son. And I know a lot of times AJ's emergencies are an emergency to him, but they're not really an emergency that actually is something that requires an ambulance and a trip to the ER. Um, but so I said, I called, I told them, I go, listen, I'm going to call his grandma because unfortunately my husband's out of town. I mean, Bill's gone. So I'm like, I'm going to call his grandmother. This is her name. She will be there. And I'm going to have her assess him and give me a phone call and let me know what she thinks needs to be done. So I call Grams and she goes to a school and by the time she gets there, he's like shaking. He's, he's. Um, in pain and there is a little pinkness to his skin and of course she the people there in the office like he needs an ambulance he needs to go to the hospital now he, he's got to go so she calls me and she's like okay we're going to the hospital um, meet us here this is what we're going to and I'm like okay I, I I'm, I'm coming but you know when you're a teacher it is really hard to just walk out and go. It's not like an office job. You know, I teach first grade. I've got 30 little people who need me to, you know, not just walk out of the room. So I call my principal. I tell him what's going on. Um, and plus a coworker had come in. And so she, she was actually there as I'm on the phone call, taking this call. And he's like, not a problem you know what, we'll put a sign on your door, your report cards will be in the office, go take care of your child. And I've said before, I love my principal, and I stand by those words. My principal is great because he just, he understands that, you know, sometimes life happens and you gotta go. So I, they come to, they come to get all the report cards and all the papers that are going home, I just give it all to them. And I stay long enough to dismiss the children to make sure that my special needs child got picked up on time. And, you know, I, I made sure to take care of all of my little munchkins before I got into my car and left. So I actually ended up staying at the school like 20 more minutes, even though AJ is being transported to a hospital because, you know, I, I've got to take care of them too. So then I get in my car. And I'm driving to the hospital, and it's like 40 minutes for me to drive to this hospital because I don't live anywhere near where I work. And <clears throat> at this point, I'm driving, and I've got nothing but time to think. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, my report cards aren't even done. On my lunch hour, I was going to manually go in and check off the grades for gym and for art. And remember, I don't have math grades on my report cards. So when they printed the documents, it, the, it printed with the math section. So I was going to go in and manually check mark the math grades. Well, 
hello, I'm not doing that now. I'm on the road, I'm gone. You know, the report cards are being handed out in like an hour. And I can't just call the office and say, hey, uh, for this kid, can you check? I mean, I had folders of work that I was going to use to put those math grades together on my lunch hour, because I was going to have an hour and 10 minute lunch, which would have been more than enough time to look through those folders and just put a few check marks and yeah. So I'm thinking about the fact that my parents are getting imperfect report cards, missing grades. And that is not good, okay? I'm sorry, it's not my fault that the grades aren't there electronically. You know, the report cards were not working right. But now, you know, they're getting crappy report cards. And, you know, that makes me look incompetent that they're getting crappy report cards. And then I'm thinking about the fact that I'm missing conferences, you know? Teachers don't miss conferences. Um, and then I'm thinking about the fact that I had several children who I really, really, really needed to see their parents because there's some bona fide issues going on. So now I'm gonna have to come back to work and like try to set up appointments for all of these parents to see them so that we can talk about their child's progress or lack of progress. And so this is all going through my head. And and at the same time, going through my head is, oh God, let AJ be okay. Please let AJ be okay. Please let this not be a big, big deal. You know, what's wrong with my kid? What's happening? So, yeah, it's a hot mess. Um, so I'm almost to the hospital when my phone rings. I turn on the speakerphone and it's the technical campus that AJ goes to in the morning. AJ, he does half a day at like a, a trade school where he's doing welding, automotive, collision, repair work, and then in the afternoon he goes to normal high school where he has English and all that other stuff. So they call me and they're like, how's AJ? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm not there yet. He's with his grandmother, he's, at the, he's in the emergency room, but I'm, you know, I'm still five minutes out. And so they're like, okay, well, can we talk to you for a moment? I'm like, sure. So they're talking to me, but I'm paying attention to the road. I've got a lot on my mind. So I'm kind of like, I hate to say it, I'm half listening. And, but so as they're talking about how they've, they've AJ had been instructed on safety protocols and, and the teacher had assured her, because the teacher was there too, that you know AJ had been instructed in safety protocols. It's a very safe facility. They run, blah blah. And I understand it. They're worried about liability. At that moment, my kid is nothing but dollar signs to them. Is this parent going to sue us? No, I'm not going to sue anybody. Okay, I'm a teacher. When you put kids and chemicals together, something's going to happen. An accident's going to happen. I had no intention. It never even crossed my mind to to sue or try to go after this teacher personally. You know. And so I'm pulling into the hospital parking lot. I'm looking for a parking space. And I literally say to them, listen, I'm sure whatever happened, it was an accident. You know, AJ's a teenager. He can be a blockhead sometimes. Um, I'm, not, I'm not putting liability on anybody. I'm not blaming anybody. It was an accident. It's an accident. And I'm thinking I'm solving the problem. Well, at that point, they kind of like, I felt like they almost turned on me. And they're like, well, you know, we're not sure what we're going to do with him if we can't trust him with safety protocols. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, please, please don't kick my son out of the program. Okay, AJ hates school. He's always hated it. And as a teacher, <laughs> that was a real hard concept for me to come to terms with. It really was. You know, I have two children. One loves school, one can't stand it and can't wait to be done with it. I loved academia. I loved everything about it. College was some of the best days of my life because that was, that was my chance for me to like grow into my own without the peer pressures of high school. So for AJ to hate school, it was a rude awakening for me. And, and, and for years, like, why do you hate school? What do you, because he could get A's and B's. He was more than capable of doing A and B work. When we would sit down and study together and I would make him study, 
he'd get an A on the test. In fact, a lot of times if you look at his report, his grades and his grade, it would be, you know, test A, missing assignment E, missing assignment E, uh, assignment D minus, uh, test B plus, missing assignment. So, I mean, he'd pass the test with no problem, but he wouldn't do the work. And so we've butted heads over this for years. But this year was his first year in the technical campus and he loves it. It's hands-on, it's exciting, um, it's in his wheelhouse and he loves it. He's pulling an A in it and this was the best year of school we've had so far with AJ. Seriously, he loves it, he loves it, loves it. I am a huge champion of Mike Rowe because you know what? Not every kid in this country is going to college. Not every kid in this country should be on the college track because it's not their calling. And I think sometimes we, as parents and as teachers, we've got to stop forcing the square peg into the round hole. Not every kid is going to college. That doesn't mean that kid's a failure. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that kid. It just means it's not for them. Okay, so college is not for AJ, trade school is, he's loving it, and suddenly with my kid in the hospital and everything's going wrong at work, I'm thinking they're kicking my kid out of the program, <laughs> you know, and so they're like, no, 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 we're not saying we're going to kick him out, but, you know, we can't let him back into the lab until he can prove he can follow safety protocols, and you have to understand, we may have to have a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional work with him at all times, and, you know, the teacher's got, the, like, at this point, they're basically implying my kid's a moron, okay? And I'm sorry, my kid is not a complete moron. And talk about the mama bear claws coming out. I, at this point, I'm, I'm mad. Um, and I'm, I park my car in the parking lot and I'm still talking to these people. I've been on the phone like, for another minute with these people. I'm at the hospital, I'm in my car, in the parking lot. And I'm like, you know what? I need to see my kid. I'm hanging up now because I haven't even seen AJ. So I don't even know how he got the chemical on him. I don't know his story yet. And I need to go, <laughs> you know? And I think they could hear the anger rising in my voice. And so they're like, yes, go see your son. And I, even now I'm, I'm getting really hot. <laughs> Just like, ugh, you know? I don't care if he did screw up. He's still my kid. Back off. Um, but, so I finally hang up with him, I get into the hospital, they take me to his room, grandma's still there, and I don't want to go into a lot of what was going on in there because, you know, I'm going to pause for a moment, I'm going to pause for a moment because I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> Sorry about that, I just literally, I got so riled, I just had to like, take a pause, but so... At the hospital, AJ explained, you know, what happened, and honestly, it was a mistake, but it was a really honest mistake. While he was using the chemical paint, the stripper, he got some here on his arm. So he stopped what he was doing, he followed safety protocols, he went to the sink to wash it off of his arm. He took off his gloves, put them down, used soap and water to wash the arms, and then to get a new pair of gloves, he picked up those to throw those away. Well, when he picked up those gloves to throw them away, he contaminated his hand with the chemical. But he didn't know he contaminated his hand with the chemical. And so it literally wasn't until like an hour later when he was off the technical campus and back at high school that his hand began to you know, be on fire and was burning really, really bad. So, yes, it was an error, it was his error, but it was, honestly, it was a simple error. And trust me, it's one he won't repeat again. He, he learned his lesson yesterday from that. And so, later on when we finally got home from the hospital, his school called back again to check on him. And, and I explained to them what happened. And this time they were much politer about it. They were, and plus I had calmed down, I wasn't, furious with them anymore but so he's not getting kicked out of his technical campus he doesn't need a one-on-one -on -one para pro and 
today they're going to use him as an example to have a teaching moment for the rest of the class that, you know, hey, this is, don't do this because this is what could happen. And so, and AJ would, I mean, he, he knows he made a mistake, but I think what he really feels this morning is embarrassment. And honestly, there's a part of me that's really not happy that this is probably what's going to happen in school today because he already had a really crappy day yesterday. And I think he and I both agree that it probably shouldn't be rubbed in his face today, that that's what happened. Um, but whatever, at least they're not kicking him out and you know, it's fixed. But yeah, when, don't do that to a mom, <laughs> especially teachers who are soon to be teachers or if you are a teacher, when you have a parent going to the hospital, don't, even if you are protecting your job, even if you are trying to protect the institute from a lawsuit, don't in so many words tell that mother on the phone that their kid's a moron and it's their fault. Yeah, that was, that was not handled well yesterday and they don't know my backstory anyway. They'd have no idea that I'm missing parent-teacher conferences. They have no idea that my port cards are less than perfect. They have no idea that, you know, well actually they did know I had not even seen my child yet. So it really was a perfect storm of worst case scenarios yesterday. And even at the hospital while AJ's being treated, I actually had an anxiety attack of my own. Um, I had like an adrenaline rush and then I crashed and then I experienced my own sensation of my hands were going numb and my face was going numb and as you guys know I've, I've been suffering with anxiety for years so by the time we finally got home from the hospital I actually thought about going in for the evening conferences but at that point I was still a little worried about AJ and I was recovering from my own anxiety attack. I, and if you've ever had an anxiety attack, by the time you're over it, you are physically exhausted. I don't know what it is about an anxiety attack, but by the time you're over the attack, your body feels like you just ran a 5K mar marathon. You're spent. Um, so, and plus with Bill out of town, it just seemed like I should just stay home with my boys. And just and just take care of all of this because at this point the report cards were what they were uh, most of the conferences would have been in the morning anyway very few actually come in the evening and the day had gone straight to the crapper and there really was no fixing it at that point um, so today is only a half a day with my students uh, we have an afternoon PD Although, I'll be honest, this morning, I really wish I didn't have kids this morning because one of the things I love about Report Card Day is you do get that big, long lunch hour, and then in between conferences, you can actually get a lot of work done. And then we have a dinner hour that's two hours long. I was going to do lesson plans during that dinner hour. I have not done any lesson plans at all for next week. Zip. Nothing. I was going to do them yesterday during the two hour dinner window and like I said in the evening conferences you usually only get like three or four people show up so you just have all this time on your hands. I was going to knock out lesson plans last night. Well I ran out of school so fast yesterday I didn't grab anything so even as I'm sitting at the hospital for a couple hours or last night I was sitting here at the house everything I needed to do lesson plans was at work. So I have, I, unless I'm going to spend the weekend lesson planning, I have an entire week's worth of lesson plans to try to get done this morning and at lunch today, which I'm not looking forward to. It's, oh, too many things going on. Too much stress. Way too much stress. So I am in my classroom. I've actually been here for like 20 minutes. And I feel like all I've done is just wander around the room aimlessly. I don't know what is the deal is, but I cannot get with it today. I just, I don't know. I, I feel out of it. I'm tired. Yesterday just has me down. And I just kind of don't want to be here, which is not a nice way to be. 
but at the same time, that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. My head's not in the game, which the kids are going to be in my room in 30 minutes. I need to get my head in the game. So I should probably stop talking to this, even though I just picked it up, and do something. I think I'm going to go talk to Susie. I think that's what I'm going to do. I need to see my BFF for a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, <I'm> so <laughs> This is why I needed Susie this way because I told her when I left my room, like, I, 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 I need to see Susie. And I'm telling Susie what sorry happened that yesterday, and she's here laughing. And I'm telling her how I'm having an anxiety attack in the middle of the emergency room while AJ's having an anxiety attack in the emergency room. And she's like, When do they invent a Xanax and a Tootsie Pop? How many licks does it take to get to the middle of a Tootsie Pop and get your Xanax? And yes, oh, by the way, this is Susie, the BFF. Hi. <laughs> and look how shit skinny she is. I mean, hello. Look how skinny she is. 55 pounds down. Woohoo! But yes, so <laughs> pharmaceutical companies, the makers of Xanax, if you are watching this vlog, which I highly doubt you are, please make Xanax lollipops because they are a necessity. We need these. Seriously, there are many, many teachers and women and working moms around the world who need a Xanax lollipop. Xanax centered lollipop. Xanax centered lollipop. <laughs> And that will be a line that says, how many licks does it take to get to the Xanax in your lollipop? <laughs> okay. Yeah, enough. My kiddos are gone. Uh, lunch is, I, it's lunchtime right now. I've already eaten my food. I was actually pretty hungry. I scarfed it down pretty quick. So right now, I didn't want to go out to lunch. A lot of the teachers went out to go have a nice lunch out somewhere. Um... I, I'm staying in my room because I'm just getting some work done. I managed to get my lesson plans done for next week because I remembered next week is Thanksgiving, so I only had to write lesson plans for two full days and one half day. Uh, we always have a half a day, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and then Thursday and Friday, obviously, are no school. And I am so grateful next week is Thanksgiving because I am ready for a break. I am so ready for a four day weekend and to just get some stuff done at home and spend some time with my family. So for lunch today I just had a quick little lean cuisine and of course my Dan and yogurt. Um, hold on, that is my sister. <laughs> my sister and my dad are having a big late breakfast because dad had a procedure this morning and so he's just now getting to eat his breakfast so they're like at Bob Evans totally gorging themselves on a he-man breakfast <coughs> which is nice and I wish I was there um, our PD today is more Mesa training this afternoon which is fine um, I will do that but right now I'm just going to get the room clean and I cannot find a teacher's manual. I have tore this room up looking for a teacher manual and I have no clue where it is. Uh, which makes no sense because I know for a fact I had it. I mean, I can, I can swear on a Bible. I had the manual. I've torn the room apart. I have torn my house apart. I will continue to look. I don't need it for next week, but the week after Thanksgiving, I totally need it. I, I have to have it. So I don't get it. I have no idea where it is. Um, this morning was a half a day, so we just, it was also a busy day because we had um, our prep is in the morning on Fridays, so they had that. And then we also had to go to the school's pop up shop. So we spent about 20 minutes waiting our turn and then going into the pop up shop and previewing all the little items and trinkets that are on sale next week. It is a fundraiser to help pay for, I forget what we're using that money for. <laughs> it's not the math, math elites. That was a different fundraiser. I'm not sure what this is for. Maybe for green school projects. I'd have to ask. We always have something going on trying to raise money for assorted projects around here. Um, so I am actually going to go ahead though and wrap up this vlog because hopefully tonight I can get it edited and uploaded and ready to go live tomorrow morning. My husband is on his way home. He's from out of town and I'm excited to see him. And I am really looking forward to just a quiet weekend this weekend. We haven't 
planned anything, you know, no, no big plans or anything, because honestly, I really would just want to stay home this weekend. I am ready to just kind of build a fire in the fireplace, make a nice hot cup of tea, curl up on the couch with either a good movie or bin or a good book and just relax. The last few weeks have been really work heavy between report cards, grading, getting things done. I feel like it's just been nonstop work, 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 work. I am ready to relax. So having said that, I'm going to say goodbye to all of you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you are all having a wonderful school year and that your family is doing well and I hope you have a great weekend. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more from me in the future, click that subscribe button and I'll talk to you guys later.